Joy French, and I had a trailer up by Lake Merwin, that's south of uh, Longview and north of Vancouver. And uh, I went in there in the middle of the night, and I called into security to tell them I was there alone. And then this man that I knew was had a trailer down by the lake. I was up at the top of the hill. The man from down by the lake called me when he heard me on the CB, and he said, uh, Joy, I've got a television aerial up in the trees, and that was very good, but it was better than what I had. So he said, if you want to come down and watch TV. And um, so that's the last thing I remember. I don't remember getting in the car, driving down there, finding the place that he was at. But I don't know how, what time it was, coming back up the hill, he was driving my car. And I thought, what's the matter? How come he's driving my car? And about this time, the whole sky opened up. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face up there. It was so dark at night. And I'm looking at the sky and wondering what the heck that is. It wasn't an airplane because I worked for the airlines. And he, my car stopped and he jumped out, put the hood up. I could see him underneath the hood and I'm still looking up at the sky, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. And then pretty soon he came in and he said, there's nothing wrong with your car. So he put the hood down and the car started. That's the last thing that him and I knew till the next day. We don't remember going to our trailers, going to bed. And I called him on the CB and said, Don, meet me down to the kitchen. They had a community kitchen there. And we met over in the corner where nobody could hear us. And we talked about that we lost time. We didn't know what it was. So I never talked about it for till I moved over here, back over here to Coeur d'Alene. 2000, because I was afraid somebody think you're crazy. So, that's so there's two parts of the story. Then is it there is the part where you remember being in the car, yeah, your car, yeah, yeah. And before that, you lost some memory too. Yeah, I lost the memory before. Before I remember being in the car, just a short span there. He calls you on the CB. You say, "Let's meet." Well, he said, "Come down and watch TV." Okay. Because he had a better aerial than I did, so. And then you don't remember the next thing you remember. You're in your car. Well, yeah, the next thing I remember after talking to him on CB. He says, come down, let's watch some TV. And he was driving my car up the hill. And I, I'm thinking, what's he doing driving my car? I don't let somebody drive my car. Right. I drive my own car. So that was confusing. And then um, mm -hmm. after the car started, I don't remember driving back up to my trailer. And I didn't remember anything until I usually woke up about 6 o'clock in the morning and it was 8, I think it was. Oh, it was eight usually. Eight in the morning when I woke up, and I went, "What's the heck going on?" There? Motor yeah, cuts yeah, up. Yeah. He goes out. Yeah. Lifts, lifts up the hood. And there's a light. Yeah. From, you can't tell. It's well, something. It wasn't like a beam. The whole sky lit up, like it was broad daylight. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't like a airplane coming down. And it beam. was a big area of light, and yeah, it, it wasn't was, focused in one space. The whole sky. And up there, uh, it's so dark you can't walk to the bathroom. Right. Because it's too dark. Yeah. And so. he lifts the hood up and everything's fine. Yeah. And it starts again? Yeah. And then he put the hood down, coming back and got in the car and said, there's nothing wrong with this car. And that's the last thing he said to me. And He so. didn't remember anything after that either? No, uh-uh. Yeah. And you wake up in your trailer the next yeah. day? He wakes up in his trailer? Well, that's what I have to, I could never figure out uh, how he got back to his trailer because I don't think his car was up at my place, and he was driving up the hill to my place. It's a lot, a lot of confusion what, what went on when my mind wasn't there. So he didn't remember anything either. He, he just wakes remember. up in his bed. Yeah. Did he wake up later than usual too? Well, probably about the same time. I don't know. I you woke up at eight. You usually woke up at six. Yeah. Well, I usually woke up at six, but I woke, woke up about eight o'clock that day. And, I slept in. And you couldn't remember where you. I never remembered it. And he didn't remember anything either. The only thing I remember was a car, a short span there, and him putting the hood up. I don't remember finding the trailer that he was in, where it was even at, or, or him getting in my car and him driving my car. And I, But at the time, I thought, well, that's not an airplane, because I worked for the airlines. It would be a beam of light instead of the whole sky. Was was he illuminated in, by, on, in front of the car from the light? Yeah, you could see him out there. And normally you wouldn't see anything. Yeah. But you could see him. Oh, yeah. So that means there was a lot of light. Yeah. Way too much. More than, that's what confused me. Where in the heck is that coming from? Was it the whole area of the sky? The whole or, sky. And it just very bright. Yeah. 
the whole time. It was he like was, a sunny day in the daytime. In, at night? Yeah, right. It was probably around 12.30 or something like that, midnight, because I had to drive from Seattle down there. So that's, it's still confusing. I don't know what the heck went on, but something went on there. It wasn't right. Did you ever get any hypnosis or anything to? Uh, after I had UFO meetings, a woman tried to hypnotize me and she couldn't to see if I'd been abducted. Good. So either I'm too strong or too mm -hmm. ignorant, I don't know what. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, she right. tried to hypnotize me in, in Battleground. Oh. So it didn't work. Anything else that you wanted? I don't think I was abducted. No, no signs of. But the whole thing was confusing, and I thought, what the heck went on there? Did you have any other symptoms the next morning that would be strange, that were not typical, besides waking up a little late? No, no. I mean I didn't. Well, I didn't even. We didn't even talk about. It. We sat over in the corner where nobody could hear us, because there was people in there, and um, I was surprised. I thought it was just me that had this. And he said, no, I can't remember anything either, Joy. Did he ever talk about it again? Well, he talked about it to me, and then he moved away, and I moved up to Bellevue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wasn't around where he was at. So. And what is the nearest landmark that people would recognize in that area? What is there a mountain there? Or? Well, yeah, we were in the mountains, and Lake Merwin was down below. Well, yeah, are there any large landmarks around there that are well-known, big mountains? Yeah, there's a lot of mountains. What's it called, the closest one? Le uh, the one that... Blue, St. Helens is right there. Oh, so it's near yeah. St. Helens. And since then, I've had talked to people up there, and they've seen ships down there trying to suck the water up. Oh, really? So other people are seeing things around there, too. Other people have yeah. seen things around there. I talked to a guy in Portland that used to go to school here, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, they've seen ships there, but nobody talks about it. Right. So, mm. so they figure there's something going on there. And it's mm. like... The water is the f their fuel, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what's going on. What year was this? But I wasn't. I, I evidently I wasn't uh, abducted. So. What what what's the closest you can remember the date? Oh God, I can't remember. The weather was pretty good yet, so it was either what, early, early spring or. What year? About seventy nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So. Well, thanks.